In the last film, I talked to Susie Martineau about the health benefits to individuals of being in and around trees and nature more widely. Today, we're going to explore the connections between society and trees and consider how this will affect the future of our woodlands and forests. The extent to which we will improve our woodlands and create new areas of planting in the future will largely depend on society's view of woodlands. We witnessed widespread demonstrations in 2011 when the public believed that our national forest was under threat and anger is now being voiced about the loss of ancient woodland due to HS2. There has been less of a focus on the damaging chronic problems that beset our woodlands. The decline in biodiversity levels, the death of many native species as a result of climate change and disease, the decline in the management of woodlands and the almost complete lag of new woodland creation in the UK outside of Scotland, a pitifully small 2,600 hectares for the year 2019. 20. Will we care enough about reversing these chronic problems to demand that government make it a policy priority and incentivize landowners to expand and manage their woodlands? To discuss this vitally important topic, I'm joined here today by Gabriel Hemery, a forest scientist, author of The New Silver and Green Gold, and co-founder of the Silver Foundation. Hi, Tom. Tell us a bit about yourself and the Silver Foundation. Yes, I'm a silvologist or forest scientist. I spent my whole career working uh, both as a practicing forester and someone who, with a real passion for the natural environment and science. And uh, I suppose that's what led me to do a PhD or DPhil in walnuts. And then, yes, I occasionally get jokes about uh, being Dr. Nuts. Um, but that aside, uh, I've also got a real interest in social science. So quite a lot of the work I do now is uh, reaching out to those who care for woodlands and find out what they need and what they want and to try and translate that in a way that helps good policy come forward. And 11 years ago, as you say, I co-founded the Silver Foundation. It's an environmental charity that sets out to support those who uh, look after and care for our woodlands to give them tools and services to help them do the right thing. And here in South Oxfordshire, where I'm speaking to you from today, we've got our wood centre, which is set up to support those who work in wood uh, and to set up sustainable businesses. The connection between society and trees is often referred to as wood culture. Can you tell us a bit about wood culture in Britain, what it is and why it matters? Yeah, we actually coined the term wood culture when we set up silver. Um, it's the idea that there's an affinity between people in the natural world and specifically trees that's important. So we came from the trees industrial revolution we relied on trees and we became a superpower based on our on our ability to make and uh, feed ourselves with heat produced from from trees so trees have been critical to our society in the past but now looking forward there's a an opportunity for us to be ever more connected with the natural world and to help us live more sustainably the challenge i think for us in britain is that we are one of the least wooded countries in europe so we've got um, very few number of trees per person, actually it's 47 trees per person is what the math suggests. And to put that in context, there are 182 trees per person in France, uh, over 700 trees per person in the US, and if you head to Scandinavia you're looking at many thousand of trees per person. And I think that speaks to the idea that um, we don't have so much open natural um, space in Britain, and ch children and the public are disconnected from it. And then that has an impact then on how we might hope to live sustainably because if people can't connect, they might not care enough about our natural world. Do you think that we as a society have gradually become disconnected from nature and particularly trees? And do you think that the recent lockdown has enhanced our connection? Yeah, for sure. You know, I think it's been an a incremental uh, increase in that disconnection if that makes sense over the last century particularly as we've become increasingly urbanized as a society but I think lockdown's done something else I think you know we've all noticed nature more I've noticed it more um, we've noticed it more here at the wood center and um, there's less noise and traffic you can hear nature almost giving it a space to breathe um, but 
there's something about the damage that a disconnection from nature is causing and there's lots of evidence for that so at its most basic level if, if we lack that affinity if we don't care for nature then how can we work with it to en ensure we have a sustainable future and that's what led us at Silver to do uh, one of our first projects actually was called the One Oak Project and in that we felled a, a great oak tree with as much um, noise as we could in terms of videos and um, stories and getting the Met press involved to tell the story of what it takes to grow an oak over 200 years to fell it and to make it into 60 products which we then took on a, a road show around Britain and it was called the One Oak Project and it really did um, uh, make people think about where wood comes from and how we can care for uh, woodlands over intergenerational time periods and that's a real challenge to explain. We know that on the whole people like trees and forests but how do you think that society views forestry and foresters? That's tricky. I, I think uh, we're still suffering from perhaps the the consequences of what forestry was 50, 60, 70 years ago or even more where it's about forestation or uplands perhaps um, with less understanding and sensitivity around nature. I say perhaps and I think that's a given really. Um, and also other things, even the, the, the issues with tax uh, in the 80s with rich investors buying up large amounts of forest just to avoid the tax man. So they, they linger on these issues but I think fundamentally it's more akin to this disconnect between people and the natural world. So if you can't get your head around the fact that it took two generations of human time for a tree to become valuable enough to fell it and all the complexities of that life cycle and how in that time the tree was growing we'll be replanting trees in, in and around it but people won't understand that that mix that complexity and they have no idea that um, that's what sustainable forestry is around so I think the, the nature of trying to describe forestry is a very complex one and that's our difficulty as an industry. Before COVID, tree planting was big news. Society demanded that more trees be planted to help offset climate change, and politicians were competing with ever bigger targets. In anticipation that this priority will return, do you think that focusing on tree planting alone is a sensible approach? Well, I think a focus on tree planting is definitely very welcome. It's needed for the reasons we've discussed about how few trees we have already in Britain. Um, I think the ambition in one sense is not big enough but at the same time my concern and partly why set silver up was to tackle the idea that we can't really yet care for the trees that we've already got we seem to be um, letting them languish in some cases while we're out there seeking to plant new ones sometimes with not strong enough objectives in mind to be ultra critical so for a case in mind we know almost half our woodlands aren't being managed as measured by the instance of a management plan being in place. At the same time there's lots of forests planted without a good idea about what they might become, why they're being planted, uh, how they'll be managed to support sustainable society. It's not good enough just to plant a, a woodland because it's green or because it looks nice. It has to do more than one thing. We need to help nature work for us as much as we have a responsibility to care for nature. I would love us to not only plant more trees but have real really big ambitions I'm talking about doubling our woodland cover um, you know why not try and create a, a new doomsday forest but at this moment we can't grow enough trees without resorting to importing them which is a danger for biosecurity and we know that landowners are quite unconvinced of the benefits in many cases so we've got quite a challenge in our hands. Gabriel what are your hopes and fears for the future of Britain's forests? I think some might say I've got more fears and hopes um, but of course climate change and the growing threats from pests and pathogens are uh, enormous issues for us so we potentially all our hopes may be dashed if we don't tackle these big global environmental issues uh, appropriately so that's I've got to start with those um, I am worried about apathy among um, decision makers and ultimately, you know, this idea that maybe nature deficit or disorder will become a new pandemic, that our next generation will be completely disconnected from the natural world, which would be very, very worrying uh, for the future of um, our society. On a more positive note, I think biotechnology is very exciting. The idea that we can grow ever, um, build, sorry, ever taller buildings, that we can um, 
make more and more things from uh, uh, biomass, whether it be lipstick or ballistic proof vests, um, to uh, effectively a whole car made out of biocellulose in the future. I think those sort of developments are very exciting and I think hand in hand with perhaps society becoming more green, uh, that, that would be my optimistic take on the situation. If you could propose one policy suggestion to the government relating to trees, woodlands and forests, what would it be? Well, reflecting on the fact that no government can really deal with the fact that forestry goes over multiple generations, let alone multiple political terms, I would wish really for um, a number of different concerted actions to come together into a single stream of work from government. And that would be for all departments across government to become linked in to thinking about how they deal with nature and the natural world. So I'd like the education department to sort out the fact that every school child in Britain should have access to forest school. I'd like for business to have the triple bottom line built into their, their DNA and to be sort, uh, supported through government actions and how they're rewarded. And I'd like those to, who care for the land, including our trees, to be rewarded and supported for the way that they care for them, uh, not just beyond the economic benefits they might get, but for what they do for society as a whole. So the short answer is I'd like government to bring its departments together and have a coherent, concerted plan to support nature. Thank you, Gabriel. That, that's great. You, you've given us a lot of stuff to think about there. It's been a pleasure, Tom. Thanks so much. Uh, it's been really nice speaking with you. Gabriel said it's no surprise that we've lost our affinity with trees and the natural world. This loss of connection with nature and wood culture in the UK may be one of the reasons that tree planting has fallen so far behind targets and why 50% of our woodland remains undermanaged. Gabriel is an inspiring example of a modern forester who today is as likely to be managing floodplains and ensuring water quality or creating habitats for birds and rare plants as he is thinning or felling trees. I like the use of trees per person as a measure. This seems to be a better figure than hectares or total trees planted. It's not only understandable and comparable, but it helps to underpin the joint fate of woodlands and society. Gabriel hopes that trees may yet help save us from ourselves. But it seems to me that we expect to take so much from our woodlands. In our last film, we discussed the health benefits that trees give us. We also want to take timber for buildings, enjoy recreational activities, and we expect trees to absorb the excess CO2 and pollution that we produce. Trees can do all of this, but we have to give something back. We need to have a reciprocal and responsible relationship with nature that understands the fragility of these ecosystems from a non-human point of view. One that leads to a responsibility to care for the trees that we have and designs in the maintenance of those that we will plant. So we need more education in all sectors of society, from school children right up to professionals such as architects. The Silver Centre does a great job of doing exactly this, as do many local forest schools, but we need more of it. And we need it to be supported across government departments, just as Gabriel suggested. So thank you again for watching and please subscribe to our Wood for the Trees YouTube channel to see our latest films. Goodbye.